all right you are welcome again today let's talk about calculus under calculus let's talk about inequality you know in this lesson i want us to treat introduction to inequality all you need to know about inequality we we'll also talk about the principles of inequality then we we'll also take a transitivity law okay We'll take a theorem called transitivity law in inequality please it's very very important please watch this to the end most especially the transitivity law okay now let's go all you need to know about inequality that is what this video or this lesson is all about now let's go an inequality is a statement that one expression is smaller than the other expression or greater than the other expression hello you know when they talk about inequality they are talking about a statement that of two quantities one is specifically less than or greater than another okay a statement that of two quantities that one is specifically less than or greater than another okay now hence the following expression defines inequality now with this let's also take more definition that is more explanation to inequality now we say that if a b and x are real numbers then we have something like this we have the sign a the sign b so this sign it simply means a is less than b and then we have this and then this one simply means a is greater than b all right now when you have something like this a it simply means that a is less than or equal to b then when you have something like this it simply means that a is greater than or equal to b all right good now when you have something like this now do you see this now this is simply saying that x is greater than a but less than b hello now let's take a look at this if you want to pronounce this we're going to start from the center to the left and then from center to the right so that means we're going to say x is greater than a but less than b now let me show you how to read it you know normally when you have two like a less than x you know we read it a is less than x but when you say a is less than x that means that x is greater than a is that true that means we want to read from center to the left you change it okay opposite of it that means instead of you saying a is less than x you say x is greater than a and then x is less than b all right so the expression read x is greater than a but less than b likewise when you have a greater than x greater than b so the correct reading of it says x is less than a but greater than b x less than a but greater than b all right but also when you have expression that looks like this you read it like this x is greater than or equal to a but less than or equal to b x is greater than or equal to a but less than or equal to b now let's go other properties of real numbers we say that for all a b which are real numbers or which exist in real numbers one and only one of the following properties hold good either a is less than b or a is equal to b or a is greater than b you know when you pick two numbers from real numbers you will have something 
like this. It cannot be two, it cannot be three. You only have one and only. So when you pick two numbers from real numbers, the relationship between these two numbers is either now let's let's just take a and b let's say that two numbers you pick from real numbers are a and b and they will say that the relationship between this a and b is either a is less than b or a is equal to b or a is greater than b there is no other no, when you pick two real numbers the relationship between these two numbers is either a less than b or a equal to b or a greater than b now let's go we also say for all a b exist in r you see with a less than b then there exists c which exists in r such that c is greater than a less than b hello so we say for all a b are real numbers with a less than b there must exist c which exists in r such that c is greater than a and less than b such that c is greater than a but less than b all right now let's go this property simply says that when you say that a number is less than a number now let's take for instance you say a is less than b that means there must be a quantity in between a and b there must be a difference between a and b there must be a number that shows the difference between a and b that is simply what this property is talking about now let's talk about the principles of inequality now number one principle of inequality is that the sense of inequality remains unchanged if each side is increased or decreased by the same real number when you have inequality then we say that the sense the meaning what that inequality is saying it remains the same it is unchanged if you increase or decrease the both side by the same real number okay so for instance we have minus two is less than five minus two is less than five let's decrease this so when we decrease this we're going to have minus two minus three so we decrease this by three so we decrease the left hand side we also decrease the right hand side so we're going to have minus two minus three less than five minus three so minus two minus three is minus five and then five minus three is two you discover that minus five is still less than two so the sense did not change all right more also when you decide to increase this by three so we increase the left hand side by three increase the right hand side by also three so we're going to have minus two plus three less than five plus three so minus two plus three is what one and then five plus three is what eight you still see that one is less than eight the sense did not change moroso another principle of inequality he says that the sense of inequality is unchanged if each side is multiplied by the same positive number the sense of inequality is unchanged if each side is multiplied by the same positive number by the same positive number 
right yes that means for instance we have 13 greater than 10 so when you multiply this 13 and then 10 by the same number the sense remains the same okay by positive real number the sense remains the same now let's multiply this by positive 2 so that means we're going to have 13 times 2 greater than 10 times 2 so 13 times 2 is 26 greater than 10 times 2 is 20 but what if it's been multiplied by negative number what will happen being multiplied by negative number now let's take a look at this we have 13 greater than 10 multiplied by minus 2 so we're going to have 13 times minus 2 is going to give us minus 26 so we have greater than we have 10 times minus 2 going to give us minus 20 so we have minus 26 greater than minus 20 which is wrong so when you multiply the inequality by the same negative number the sense will change when it is being divided by negative number the sense will also change hello when you divide inequality by the same negative numbers the sense will change now let's go number three principle of inequality you say that if a is greater than zero and b is greater than zero then a plus b is greater than zero if a is greater than zero and then b is greater than zero so that means when you add a plus b both of them must also be greater than zero more also number four principle you said that if a minus b is less than zero then a is less than b hello if a minus b is less than zero that means that a is less than b okay and if a minus b is greater than zero that means a is greater than b you get it now let's go let me show you what i'm trying to what is trying to say in this law you say that you have two numbers a and b then when you say that a minus b if it is less than zero that means that a is less than b but if it is greater than zero that means that a is greater than b hello now let me use two number for instance when you say two minus three what will it give you to give you minus one so is minus one greater than zero or less than zero you, see, you discover that minus one is less than zero that means that two is less than three you get it that means that two is less than three mole also when you say five minus three what will it give you it will give you two and then you discover that two is greater than zero that means that five is greater than three that means that five is greater than three all right yes now let's go number five number five said that if a is less than b and b is less than a that means that a is equal to b if a is less than b and b is less than a that means a is equal to b now let's take the last section now let's go let's take the theorem which is transitivity law now let's go you see if a is greater than b and b is greater than c then a is greater than c if a is greater than b and b is greater than c that means that a is greater than c how can we prove this if a is greater than b and b is greater than c that means a is greater than c how can we prove this now let's go this is that since a is greater than b 
That means that a minus b must be greater than zero. Now, you say that a is greater than b. That means there must be a quantity that when you say a minus b, that number must be greater than zero. So we say when a is greater than b, that means a minus b must be greater than zero. Also, when you say b is greater than c, that means b minus c is greater than zero. Hello. When you say b minus c, so when you say b is greater than c, that means that b minus c is greater than zero. Okay. Now, a minus b which is greater than zero plus b minus c both of them when you join them together definitely must be greater than zero okay good now from this place let's open the bracket we're going to have a minus b plus b minus c so minus b plus b is going to give us zero so we're going to have a minus c so we'll say a minus c is greater than zero so and then we'll say that if a minus c is greater than zero that means definitely a is greater than c if a minus c is greater than zero that means that a is greater than c all right you say hence the proof this is the transitivity law you say if a is greater than b and b is greater than c then a is definitely greater than c and then we have proved this all right yes please listen to this all over again thank you